Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. Remember, it's their own cash, and they won't be parted from it very easily. No, I'd like more than that. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to advise you to gamble and go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Whitney in Oxfordshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They want to do business. They want the real deal. The day kicks off to a busy start with the crowds gathering in the dealer's den. First up, James could be in for a tough time with someone who really knows what he's talking about. What's, what's your background? I'm a retired coin dealer, James. Yeah. That's bad, Tom. That's not brilliant That's for you, I know. That's not good for me at all, is it? No. Oh, I've already lost heart. <laughs> <laughs> so how long ago did you retire? Uh, five years, yeah. And had you kept these from your dealing days? Yeah. As a kind of, what, pension fund or something? or? Yeah, my own, for my own personal collection. Your own personal collection, yeah. yeah. Have you got lots more? Not, not no, now, no. no. no gradually well, dwindling. Gradually there. getting rid of them. Yep. Yeah. OK. So you've got here a 1937 specimen set. That's right. Royal Mint proof set of coins. Yep. And this one is 1927. 1927, yeah. 1927. So 1927, George V. Fifth. Fifth. No particular anniversary in 1927, was there? No. He was on the no. throne for 16, 17 years 17 or something? years, yeah. yeah. So this is just an annual, annual Royal Mint production. Yeah. So you've got yeah. crown, half crown, florin, yeah. shilling, sixpence, threepence. Yeah. And all in those days solid silver. Absolutely. Well, this is, this is different, isn't it? So this is the first year of George VI's reign. Correct, yeah. And this is a proof set of, of everything, including a Maundy set? Yeah, a Maundy right? set as well, yeah. a Maundy set, So yeah. that's four pence down to yeah. a silver penny, is that right? That's right. Well, I'll make you an offer. OK. Um, I'm at a disadvantage because you you know the prices. I do. Yeah. yeah. Down to the last sixpence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put some money on the table and see how we go. Okay. Um, that's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 2, 220, 240, 260. 280, 300, 320, 340. I'm tired of counting now. 360. That's, that's well short, James. Well short. Well short. Oh, I thought it might be. So I've, I've, yeah. when I've recovered, I'll get some more out. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, 380, 400, 420, 440. 460. No, it's still short, James. It's still short. It's still short. Okay, 460. 480. 500, Tom. Yeah. That means you probably have to make about 560 in auction to get that in your hand. That's right. Um, it's still a little, little bit light, James. Um, Is it? Yeah. Mm. I'd like to yeah. buy them, but I think I'm getting pretty close to what I'd want to give. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll put I'll put one more twenty down. So that's five twenty. Five twenty. I think that's probably about what I so, had in mind, really. Okay, James, we'll have a deal at we'll five have a deal. twenty. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very okay. much, Tom. Thanks very much. I shall enjoy thank playing you. with them for a bit <laughs> yeah. before I pass them on. And James couldn't be happier with the deal. This really takes me back. I started collecting coins, I suppose, when I was about 12 or 13. And this is this really takes me back to the beginning of, of my kind of dealing days. Really nice to find these. And to buy them from a, an ex-coin dealer who had them for years is kind of an added bonus because I think I've got them at a reasonably good price. But we're both happy. I'm really happy and he's going to spend his money on golfing. Next up, why has this old pot got everyone so interested? The Duke and auctioneer John King are looking on, and someone's feeling the pressure. Good, you're looking a little bit nervous. <laughs> Don't be 
nervous. <laughs> she brought me a lovely pot. Do you like it? I do like it, actually, yes. Right. Where did you get this from? Um, my husband's great aunt recently passed away. Oh, she I'm left sorry. us the contents of the house. My husband and my, my brother in law that yeah. we left it. We were allowed to just to take what we what we wanted and what we liked. And this is one of the things we liked. This is by Martin Brothers. Martin Brothers uh, were, um, they founded a company in around about 1880, that sort of period. And they did some quite quirky things. Mm -hmm. They had what we call the grotesque birds. Okay. Which are pots, but they're with birds' heads on, with these really funny looking birds. Right. But this is a more formal piece of pottery by Martin Brothers. Nice little size. Mm -hmm. It's not even by yeah, any means, no, you know, it's all that. a bit... Did yeah. you think it was I a mistake? It meant, yeah, is it meant to be like that? Yeah, or is it, you know, right. somebody doesn't know what yeah, they're doing? Yeah. They did know what they were doing yeah. because they made things very quirky. So you've got this uneven surface and it is signed at the base, R.W. Martin, London, Southall. So we know it's not a fake or anything because it, it's exactly as it should be. Okay. Now, John, Martin Brothers. What do we know about them? Well, uh, you know, an old-fashioned story in a modern setting in, in many respects. They went bankrupt after a big fire. The brothers fell out. They had a place in Fulham. <laughs> they had a place in Southall where they finished up. I think this particular pot is one of their ranges that, although studio would be more of their commercial side rather than the grotesque birds. Independent value was on this one. They've plumbed for a four to six hundred pound estimate. Mm. I think that's a bit on the low side. Where have you gone? Well, John? I've gone a little bit higher with six to eight. Let's see what Brenda puts on the table, and then I'll get in there and bring her up to date what we think it's worth. I'll get some money and see where we go. Okay. Twenty. Oh, she's <laughs> smiling now. <laughs> Money, money, money. 40. 60. 80 pounds. Well, there's 80 pounds on the table. I need to run in there as quick as I can and make sure nothing happens. If it was one of the Martin Brothers birds, then that's totally different. We're talking right. big money. OK. OK, you've heard what Brenda says, and I'm going to give you a little surprise. Now, when you arrived today, you brought along this bit of old tack, you thought. Mm -hmm. I'll bring that along to Dickinson's real deal. Did you have any expectation with this Martin Ware vase? None at all. Absolutely none at what all. What did you think it was worth? Anything at all? Just a few pounds? Between 30 and okay. 50, yeah. We now have 80 pounds on the table. Mm -hmm. Now, this is worth a great deal more than that. Four to six hundred pounds wow. is the low estimate. Gosh. And our and our auctioneer is saying, I feel confident six to eight hundred pounds. <gasps> so Blimey. somewhere within that, we might get a nice surprise on the day. Thank goodness you didn't sell it. Yeah. It's desirable. There will be people at the auction that will be nudging and fighting each other to buy that. Okay. So the eighty pounds, Brenda, do not open your handbag <laughs> anymore. We do not want to see the purse on this occasion. So you've heard what Davis had to say, and um, I feel he's right, and it, it should actually go to auction. Okay. I mean, I would have gone on. I would have probably taken it up to 200, 250. But because of David's advice, I think he's probably right. Okay. Let, let, let it go and see what happens. OK. All right? Fantastic. And I can see you're so surprised. <laughs> you're so surprised and so, happy. So, so surprised. Very surprised. Oh, good. Well, I hope uh, it lives up to what we think it's going to do. <laughs> All right, Lovely. Eve. Thank Lovely you to very meet much. You. you too. That was a shock for Eve. I wonder if she's recovered yet. I'm really worried about dropping the vase now, as I know the value. So, with expectations sky high, we head over to auction where John King is soon to start the bidding. Well, what did you think when you saw this? Because it's quite crude in some ways. I just thought it was a bit different, and I'll take it home and put it on my windowsill. Our independent value has estimated this between six and eight hundred pounds, somewhere around that. But the 
reserve is £500. What we're going to get here in a country sale room for it, I don't know. It probably really needs to go to a very specialist um, sale list. But it's an unusual lot and it's a rare lot. It's in very good condition. Um, start the bidding with me at 300 for it. £300 I bid for it. 320 anywhere, 320 I'm bid, 340 I have, 360 I have, 380 I have, 400 I have, 420 I have, at 420, 440 I have now. 440. 460 anywhere, at 440 pounds I have. Are you all done at 440? And then again, not quite enough. You're a bit shocked really, aren't you? <laughs> I, think you're a, I think you're a bit shocked to realise that that funny old bit of tatty vase has just potentially went for 440. Yeah, the money's always there. If it's made it here today, I suspect it will make it again, and maybe a bit more. Mm -hmm. So you have got something in your hands there. You're not losing anything by saying no. No, no, definitely not. Okay. Definitely not. So on the day, 440, real deal, but we didn't sell because it didn't quite make the reserve. Take it home, and sometime in the future, you'll be able to cash it in. That's my advice. That's the real deal. Well, a brilliant discovery. I wonder if there'll be any more to come. Our next item is a souvenir of happy holidays, but will Simon appreciate it as much? You brought in some very elaborate silverware. Yes, what can made you tell in me about India this? when I was on holiday. Right. And it um, actually is handmade. And the dealer did say that it was a dying trade and uh, that they couldn't get young people to um, make such intricate work. It was such hard work to do it. And if you look at it, it's very beautifully handmade, isn't it? It is very beautifully handmade. Yeah. It's what I would call filigree work. Filigree. It, you, it reminded me of lace curtains when well, I first it, saw it. That is exactly the, the, what it's yeah. like. I mean, yeah. if we just look at one piece here, yeah. if we hold that up, we yeah. can see exactly what you're saying. If I hold it to yeah. the light, yeah, it's, very it's exactly like lace. Yes, it is. And yes. I can imagine that um, that must be very hard to, to Ooh, manufacture. In your I eyes. Guess it's, absolutely. And I guess it's made by piercing through the silver while yeah. it's hot. There are little hallmarks on this. I'm just going to have a little look at, at what it says. I think from experience, I think Indian silver is... Yeah, it's marked quite clearly there. Now, 8.30, what that refers to is the purity of the silver. So. What I've done, Margaret, is I've weighed the silver and I know that there's approximately about 14 ounces there. And that will dictate the value yeah. of it today. Mm. So what I'm hoping is that that's going to be enough to tempt you. I'm going to offer you 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160 pounds. I don't think I would sell it for that. You wouldn't no, sell it for no. that. You want a little bit more? Yes. Well, I know that the, the value of the silver here, yeah. Margaret, is just over £200. Yeah. So I've got to leave myself a little bit of leeway. Yeah. But I am prepared to offer another £20, which would make a total of £180. W would you like David's advice? Please. Yeah. Yeah. Here it comes. Right. Now, it's not the easiest thing in the world to sell. I will yeah. say that. You are looking for someone with a very decorative taste uh, and so it may not sell so easy. That is very close. If you went to auction and got £200, you would take away 20 yes. and that would give you 180 So mm. you've got to get more than £200 in the auction. Mm. The question is, will you? My opinion is, don't gamble at auction. Yeah. Thank you, David. Well, I'll take your offer. You'll take mm. offer. Well, thank you very much indeed for bringing yeah. it in. So coming up, there are some expensive tastes over on Brenda's table. I'm going to see three <laughs> bottles of champagne on the cruise. Well, we only have magnums, don't we, darling? Oh, of course yes. we do. But can Brenda keep a clear head and walk away with the deal? Champagne. Right. Cheers! <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the market town of Whitney, just outside Oxford. We head over to Debbie's table where she's about to get a quick French lesson. Thank you so much for coming on the show and bringing with you these two uh, meat platters. You call them meat platters? I, I've been brought up to call them achettes. Have or you? Is that that's too posh. That's terribly posh. Oh, right. It's terribly posh. Perhaps I, I ought to start using that. It does sound rather grand. Um, Yes, would the uh, Chinese have uh, had meat platters like this, or...? No. no. 
You see, what I think's happened is the 18th century Chinese export items. So oh. they've been made for our market. Ah, right. That's um, what I think has happened. Yes. And in the days in which they were made, it was quite fascinating because tea ships were disappearing off to that region of the world and coming back with the ceramics of, of the Far East. As well as the tea. As well as the tea. Mm -hmm. And that's why exciting shipwrecks are found, where they're full oh, of these wonderful yes, ceramics. Yes. And they are early, but they have a massive problem for me. Oh dear, <clears throat> tell me. They have a massive problem because they're damaged. Oh, yes. These. But, I mean, they're not. They're well, the I mean, end. Chipped the, only. Or? The, the chip is enough to be classed as damage in oh, my book, and we've right. got some fairly major chips. And even worse, what's happened is because they've been used, and I'm not decrying the fact that they've been used, I think mm -hmm. it's a joy that they have been in many ways, but because they have been used, the hot meat fat has gone in under the glaze uh, it yes. looks a bit like crazy paving and we've got the mm. same on this one as well yes and to me as a dealer it it kills them in terms of their value so what i'm going mm. to do is give you an mm. offer oh dear the I'm condition in... in which they're in now yes yes um 20 30 30 pounds for the two of them for the pair Oh, I'm very disappointed. I thought that beard. I mean, I didn't think they were massively valuable, but I thought that they were more than that. If I take the 10 away and put down another 20, that would be my Your best top. offer. And right. you always have the option of taking In them to auction. to auction. Yes. You may well do better than that 40. And I would say, give it a go. Right, well, thank you. All right, it's so nice to yes. meet you. And good well. luck, I look forward to seeing how you get on. So, cash isn't king today, but will the gamble pay off? We head straight over to auction to find out. Coming up now, this is Ethnic pair of plates. The late 18th century Chinese, their export, there's a bit of damage to them. But they're quite nice. Let's see what they'll bring. I bid a hundred for them. One hundred pounds I'm bid for them. Straight in at a hundred pounds. One ten anywhere. At one ten I'm bid. One twenty. One thirty. One forty I'm bid. One fifty. One fifty I'm bid. One sixty. One seventy. One seventy I'm bid. One eighty. Wow. At one hundred and eighty pounds I'm bid. One ninety anywhere. At one hundred and eighty pounds I'm bid. And selling at one eighty on the machine. OK, the gavel's gone down at 180. I can see a real smile oh, at yes. this thing. 10% needs to come off, £18. So 162 is coming back to you. Now, what's your first reaction? I saw that whoop of delight when you saw that go well, down. Well, yes, I am really pleased because, you know, they were just sitting in a cupboard waiting for something to get dropped on them. OK, real deal brought a smile to Ethne's face and to mine. £180 under the gavel, taking home £162. Yeah, real deal. Yes. We're taking a break now from all the wheeling and dealing and stepping out to have a look at the Cotswold Motoring Museum, a must for any motoring enthusiast. And David has invited the curator, Michael Tambini, to show him some of their unusual exhibits. What's in the collection? It's a vast collection with cars dating from 1911 right up until the 1970s. But what we're really known for is our collection of automobilia and enamel signs. How many of you got of those? We've got about around 800 enamel signs and they're pinned up on all the walls. Absolutely incredible. Tell me about this little bobby dazzler here. It's a fan, isn't it? Yes, it's a, it's a desk fan. It's very unusual because it comes from the 1913 showroom set up by Morris um, when he was first setting up his industry, so sort of making Morris cars. Uh, the showroom was known as Morris Garages, and the term Morris Garages was used for the sports cars that they produced, the MG sports cars. It's got the, the address on it, the Queen Street address, which is their first showroom, and I think that would have been in that showroom. OK. Now, you brought along a can here, uh, a petrol can, but there's something different about that particular petrol can. This combines petrol with oil, and if we lift this up here, 
you'll see that inside the can there is an oil can. And remember the early days of, of motoring, petrol stations were few and far between. Until the 20s there weren't any petrol stations. By the 30s there were more, but still a few and far. So you would need to carry petrol with you, but you also used up a lot of oil. So it's quite handy if you're carrying oil as well. Now in front of you here we have something which you'll all recognise. We've had various types on the show and these are car mascots. The one that's my favourite, I have to say, it's so stylish. Have a look at this lady skiing downhill. What did that belong to, the mascot? So this mascot was made specifically for the Riley cars. The Riley factory made them and you could only have these on the Riley cars. Um, what Riley didn't want was people to be frivolous and put other types of mascots on their cars. They wanted to represent elegance, speed, the silence of the motor with their skier on the front. I want to go and have a look at this fantastic museum. Where are you located? We're in Borton on the Water, which is right in the centre of the Cotswolds. You've got something very, very special in that museum. You've got the last Grand Prix car, which was driven by the late world champion James Hunt. And it's his 1979 um, car that was driven at the Monaco Grand Prix. Go and see it. Woo! What a revving car that is. Fabulous. Back in the dealer's den, and I think Brenda's having a touch of bling envy. Nice to meet you. Yes, Whoa, thank you. We've got a bit of gold going on here. <laughs> and look at all these rings. Oh, my goodness me. Why are you selling another bit of glitz? Because it's a bit bulky to wear, and yeah. so I've just put it in the drawer right. forever. Got a 10 bob note there, haven't we? I know. That I takes know. us back. It takes me back. So we've got the teapot and... Um, that little flower opens. Yeah, little flower. So, what, what are you raising the money for? Probably another holiday. Oh, you look as though you've just been on one. Just been to Brazil on a three-week cruise. Oh, have you? Very nice. <laughs> now, it's nine carats. Yes. And we've weighed it, and it's 29 grams. That's right, yeah. OK. Take a little bit off for the glass here. So, because obviously the glass and the, and the paper isn't gold, so you have to take a little oh, bit off for that. Yeah, yeah. Can I get some money out then? Yes, please. Right. Let's do 20. 40, 60, 80, 100. No, I'd like more than that. Yeah. That will only buy me a couple of glasses of wine. I need a bit more. You drink expensive wine. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> a couple of bottles of champagne there <laughs> on a cruise. Goodness me. 20, 140. More? I think 140 is pretty fair. I think you could go another couple. Another couple of these? Another one. I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll do one of those. Make it around 150. So you've got three bottles of champagne. <laughs> Perhaps I may like four. Here's champagne, Charlie. Well, I'm going to say three <laughs> bottles of champagne on the cruise. Well, we only have magnums, don't we, darling? Oh, of course. Of course yes. we do. Let me tell you about this charm bracelet. In recent years, charm bracelets have come back in fashion. Mm. They were really not so fashionable a few years ago. And the good news is, of course, gold is at an almighty high. Now, that scraps at £294, nearly £300. Yeah. So, no, you don't want three bottles of no. champagne. <laughs> we want more. <laughs> OK. What I will do is take it up to 160, 180, 200. If you want to go and scrap it, you do that. Yeah, but that's what I need to do to make my mark. We'll have a deal. Brilliant. I'm so you've got some that. spending money? Yes. I OK, have. when are you going on your next holiday? Next week. Oh. To Ibiza. Have a lovely time. Yes. Thank Excellent. you very much. Coming up. What are you going to do with the money if you... Um, well, I've been told I've got to buy some nice shoes and a handbag, apparently. So oh, right. <laughs> she's got quite expensive taste, so... <laughs> Will Debbie's oh, money dear. run to designer or only to the high street? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. 
now we head over to Debbie's table and I think we've hit her specialist subject with this next item. Thanks very much for coming on the show and bringing these pieces of Wedgwood with you. What are you going to do with the money if you... Um, well, I've been told I've got to buy my wife some nice shoes and a handbag apparently. So. Oh, right. <laughs> well, she's got quite expensive taste, so... Um... <laughs> right, of the two pairs of items, the, the candlesticks appeal to me more. And the other thing that's interesting too is that if you have a look at the blues on the glaze of this sort of matte blue, these two have clearly always been together, okay. as have these two. Yeah. But as a collection, they probably weren't made at the same time. Okay. And literally, I can be saying they weren't made on the same day because this blue is different from this blue. Sure. Um, loosely speaking, these are jasper wear. Um, and it's a very clever technique that Wedgwood perfected over the years where they applied these pieces um, onto the vases and onto the candlesticks very, very carefully. And um, they were sliced off um, almost like a baking um, uh, tray and applied onto here. And the technique um, was very difficult and often mistakes were made and they were thrown away. So until they were absolutely satisfied, the potter wouldn't then put them out for retail. So th there's a great deal of skill involved in making Jasper Ware pieces. Um, I will point out too that they're nicely marked on the bottom of each one. You've got clearly Wedgwood and then England written on, on each one. Now, the fact that England is there tells me also quite specifically that they are dated from about 1890 onwards. England was only used at that time. Okay. So circa 1900 is yeah. a fairly safe bet for these pairs. So let me put an offer on the table. Okay. 50. £100 for the pair of pairs? Mm, not quite, no. That's a little bit more than that. OK. Right, that's 150 and that's my bag closed. You can push for another £10, maybe? £10? Yeah, we I mean, um... Oh, you're such a tough bird. Well, so if I put another 10 on the table... Yeah. You'll shake my hand. Yeah, we've got a deal. Don't go too mad on the handbag price now, will you? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks a lot. for coming. Thank you. Over to James's table, and it looks like he needs to brush up on his animal identification skills. So you brought along um, a money box, obviously. Yeah. In the shape of a cockerel of some sort, chicken. Horse, I thought. Horse? Yeah. Hmm. I suppose it could be, couldn't it? Well, it's whatever you want it to be, really, yeah. isn't it? It's a sort of horse chicken shape thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Carlton Ware. Yeah. So there's the mark. Uh, looks to me kind of 70s design. What do you think? Yeah, yeah 60s, 70s. Yeah. You didn't buy it new then? No. You, is it something you bought from a. I bought it from an antique shop. An yeah. antique shop? Yeah. yeah about five years ago. It's amazing what you can buy in antique shops. Yeah. Antiques are supposed to be 100 years old. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and this is, um, what, 30 odd years old, 40 yeah. years old, maybe. Looks all right. Good, yeah, I yeah. think. Seems to be perfect. Doesn't yeah. seem to have had much wear, does it, round here? No. Because sometimes money boxes get worn around, mm -hmm. the, around the slot. So why, why, have you, why are you fed up with this? Why are you passing this one on? Um, it's my dad's birthday in July. Oh, right, OK. And I'm open to use... Mine too, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm open to um, use the money to take them out to a local restaurant. OK. Not much I can say about it, other than just get a bit of money out and see, okay. see what you feel about it. Yeah. Um, I think I'd like to offer you 20 quid. No, that's no, not enough. Not enough. No. So, Mark, I'll put another five down, so that's 25. How do you feel about that? Okay. Can I um, squeeze a bit more? Squeeze a little bit more. Mm. Um, well, as it's um, as you're going to take me out to supper, mm, too sure about that. <laughs> I'll swap. <laughs> I'll swap the um, the five for a ten, so that's thirty. And I think that's probably as much as I want to give. But you might do better at auction. 
OK, I think I'll take it to auction. Take it to auction. Yeah. Well, look, thanks very much for bringing us along. OK, thank and you. Good luck at auction. Hope thank you do well. Cheers. The Carlton horse trots off to market, where it's soon to come under the hammer. OK, here we go. Mark, uh, the Carlton money box. You paid 15 quid for it. Yeah. You turned down 30, which was a good offer. Are we going to get a better offer here in the sale room? We're about to find out. And I bid £30 for it. £30 I'm bid to start it. £32, £34, £34 I'm bid, £36 anywhere. At £34 I'm bid, £36 anywhere. Are you all done at £34? It's a close call. £34. We've got £3.40 to take off the £34. So it is just over £30. Are you satisfied with the outcome of the gamble? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. You tried your luck. You said, no, I'm going to gamble, see if I can get a bit more. It only got a tiny bit more, but no harm was done. Real deal was here in the sale room, £34. Back to the dealer's den, where there's an odd little curio on Brenda's table. And it's amazing what some people collect. Tell me what these are. Um, we understand them to be penny lick They glasses. are penny licks. And what did they use them for? Um, I gather you took the glass itself into a sweet shop, yeah. um, paid your penny, and they would fill it with a scoop of ice cream. Uh, ice, ice cream yes. And bring that it back. That was it. That and, was your, and you came home with the glass. That was your cornet. Right. Basically. Because they didn't have cornets in those days. No. Recycling yeah. before we even started. Yeah. Brilliant idea. Nice. They're lovely items. So, yeah. have you been collecting these? No, I collect eye baths. Oh, do you? Normally. Right. Um, now, some people so, would think that's strange. I don't, because some some fabulous eye baths. Yeah, you get yeah. the the earlier ones, yeah. not the little shorter ones that mm. that we had recently. And I collect them. And one of them, yes. now, I'm not sure which one it was, but was in a local antique shop. Yes. Um, near here and. We fell in love with it and thought, oh, that's sweet. And the, the guy in there then told us what it was for. Right. Um, came away, and that was 15 years ago. OK. And we've been looking ever since yeah. to try and get more. Uh -huh. Never seen any. Right. And then um, eight months ago, we went to an auction. Yes. And there was a tray of miscellaneous yes. items. So you bought the tray? Crockery, bought the tray. And Penny that, lick. It was the one in there. That was, that was all I wanted. Yes. But I had the so tray full of stuff. So if you've waited eight years to find another one, why are you selling them now? Um, just basically, it was curiosity to bring oh, them I down. See. Right. Um, and they just thought they were unusual items. Yeah. You know. So do you we, really want to sell them now? Yeah, I'd be okay. happy to, yeah. To buy yeah. more eye baths? Yeah, it would be nice to, because they yeah. are odd to yeah. the eye baths. Yeah, it doesn't quite go with the little tiny eye baths, does it really? No. All right. Um, let's start with £10. Mm, that's the stem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give you £10 for each of them. That's getting close to one of them. I wouldn't pay £20 each for them, but what I will do is put a little bit more down for you. I will pay £15 each for them. Um, so it's 30 or nothing? Well... Or auction? Yes. That's the way it goes, really. No, I think we'll have a deal. We'll have a deal? Yeah. Cause... You'll have the money and you'll go and buy an eye bath? Yeah. Can, OK. I think I could get at least one with that. Oh, so, well done. Lovely. Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much. Coming up... We would not be doing the right thing by placing these articles in front of our dealers without having the full knowledge of what they are. What are they and what are they worth? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Whitney in Oxfordshire. The antiques and collectibles have been flooding in. And for the second time today, someone has arrived with no idea of the treasure they've been holding. The Duke has taken Jane aside for a chat, and she's keen to find out what he thinks. I will be very interested to find out, particularly this piece, because, um, you know, it could be worth not very much, or it could be worth a, a little bit more. We have put this before our experts and our auctioneer, and we have a mixed opinion about them. And because we have a mixed opinion, we feel we would not be doing the right thing 
by placing these articles in front of our dealers without having the full knowledge of what they are. These were given to you. How yes. many years ago? Um, <clears throat> yes, it was, oh, I think, probably about 30 years ago. Um, and it was a very good friend of mine who was, who was indeed interested in um, Eastern art and also um, continental art. And just one day, um, he just gave me them as a present. It's not the usual sort of thing. We were very good friends. But um, I've had them all that time and really haven't done a lot of research or anything on them. I haven't really found out about them. This lovely little, dear little um, dog here is um, obviously perhaps the oldest piece and um, white jade and this obviously the lovely lovely carving on it and the beautiful deep green um, you know it does look rather nice and I don't know why I haven't had them sort of hanging around on a piece of furniture or something you know. With this dog of foe, uh, 19th century more than likely but possibly could be 18th century. The auctioneer feels that's realistically of a reasonable value, maybe up towards a thousand pounds, if he's right. Now, what we've got here is a scepter. It's a large piece of jade. And this particular piece, again, has split opinions. Some of our experts are saying, yes, a large piece of jade, but probably purchased in the 20th century. We think the finish and the carving doesn't relate to an earlier period. But then we have others that say, I'm not so sure this might be a little bit better than we think it is. We want to be sure that we are representing you properly. So these, nice. with your permission, will go to the auctioneer. Mm -hmm. He will do his homework. And the next time you and I meet, we'll be at the auction. Well, at 30 pounds, I bet, 32 anywhere. Are you all done at 30 pounds then? So to you, madam. This is the way the auctioneer has gone. <laughs> he has said on the small pale jade piece, he thinks 1800 to 2200 with a reserve of 1800. The other one, there's a 1500 to 2000 pounds estimation with a reserve of 1500. Mm -hmm. Now, if we got a few quid for these, have you thought where you would spend the money? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I could do to change my car for one thing, des okay. desperately. Maybe a That's car, if we things. can get enough money. <laughs> Let's see what's happening here. I'll bid £1,000 for it, but £1,000 to open it. Straight in at £1,000. £1,000 to open it. 1100 I'm bid. 1150 I'm bid. 1200 I'm bid. 1250 I'm bid. 1300 I'm bid. 1400 I'm bid. 1500 I'm bid. 1600 I'm bid. At £1,600 I'm bid. In the room at £1,600. 17. 18, 1900 pounds I'm bid. We're past the reserve, we're at 1900 quid now. 1900 pounds I'm bid on the phone. 2000 I'm bid. 2000. You all done at 2000 pounds and away? Okay, first one's gone at 2000 pounds. Now we've got the Rui Scepter. Start at 1000 pounds. 1100, 1200, 1300, 1400, 1500. 15, we're at the reserve, we're passing it now. 1600, 1700, 1800, 1900, 2000, 2100 pounds I'm bid. Are you all done at 2100? Okay, 2100 pounds. Add that together, I make that 4100 pounds. We've now got to take away the commission. I make that 3600 and 90 pounds. Right. What's your first reaction? That is pretty good, that's marvellous. I think they've you know, reached their reserve and over. Yeah. I think it's a pretty good result. I think on the day we found the buyers and got the money for the pieces. Mm -hmm. You were given these by a dear friend many, many Very years ago. Very kind, mm -hmm. they've turned out mm -hmm. trumps mm -hmm. now. Lovely. And you're going away with £3,690. That yes. was the yes. real yes. deal. The real deal, thank you very much, that's marvellous. At the end of a day of exciting finds, all that's left to see is how our dealers did with their items. Well, the day turned into a shopping trip for James. He liked the coins so much they've gone into his personal collection. Simon sold the silver spoons for scrap at £230. Workmanship counts for nothing when silver prices are high. Brenda hasn't sold her penny licks yet, but she's sure someone collects them.
After buying the Wedgwood pieces for £160, Debbie sold the vases for £45. Let's hope she can make a profit when she sells the candlesticks. We just had a very satisfying result here in the sale room. Our seller Jane brought along some pieces of jade. In total, they made £4,100 under the gavel and she took home £3,690. It was a very good deal. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.